Proton, the creator of Proton VPN, Proton Mail, all the stuff you probably have heard of before, just got a massive update, probably the largest single update for their service ever that I want to walk all of you through. Let's not BS here, let's get right into the changes followed by some of my thoughts on this. So the first update you're probably gonna see is there's a whole new domain. So instead of protonmail.com and then protonvpn zone domain, it's just proton.me. This is the new central place to access Proton services. You can still access Proton's ecosystem via their old URL, but there's now a pretty much non-removable pop-up at the top. So just go ahead, modify your bookmarks or your progressive web apps or however else you interact with Proton to get to that new site. For those wondering, your email will still be fine as protonmail.com as it's always been, but I'm sure most people would prefer to use proton.me anyway, since it's shorter and easier for people around you. The other immediately noticeable thing is the new logos for all four of their services. Like all logo redesigns, I'm sure the entire community is going to be pretty darn split. I have thoughts on all of these changes later in the video, so we'll get to that, but that's formally all there is to share right now. And to finish out their branding updates, everything is just Proton now. It's now just the Proton name, which makes sense given their recent direction to expand into these other services, not just Proton Mail. Um, a really good way to frame this that they actually outlined themselves is rather than it being Proton Mail in one word, it's Proton space Mail. Proton space VPN. So it's Proton service x and this allows them to down the road just add whatever they want to it proton chat everything is now formally under the proton name which might seem like a minor thing as an end user but i think that's a big deal on their side of things and it's also gonna be a big deal down the road the next thing you'll notice is some ui changes it seems there are some updated icons here and there like in the email client some of the theming choices like the colors used in different places have changed but overall most of the ui changes on the desktop side of things are pretty minor with that said, the actual new Proton homepage, like their website, went through a massive redesign, bringing all their services together in a much cleaner central web page. I'd recommend if you really want to see side by side, you can use the web archive machine to compare the differences on like a split screen window setup. To continue on the UI changes, but on the apps, it seems the apps are supposed to have updated designs, but at the time of making this video, only Proton Calendar on Android and Proton Mail on iOS have received new updates. With that said, it seems all of the app listings have been updated except Proton VPN for iOS. So you're gonna see the new icons, new descriptions, and the new screenshots with those new interfaces on all of the app stores. But again, none of these apps have actually been updated to reflect their preview in the app store with the exception of again proton calendar for android and proton mail on ios my assumption is then making all of the changes on the app store means the apps are super duper close to going live for all i know they'll actually be live by the time you watch this video i seriously think this might be like a 12 hour window type deal based on screenshots they're sharing the apps will have a much more polished ui that actually matches the desktop experience and brings everything together much nicer, which is one of my biggest complaints with the Proton ecosystem. So this is a very welcome update, but I guess we'll have to see once the apps are actually formally out. And finally, one of the biggest changes is with the actual plans that you sign up for with the Proton ecosystem. First, now that everything is just under Proton, you paying for Proton means you sign up for everything in the same place. Free, for example, gives you limited Proton Mail, limited calendar, limited drive, and limited Proton VPN all under the same account, under the same registration process. Plus has the same thing, but with more premium features. And the most exciting update is Proton Unlimited, which gives you full access to everything in the suite, from Proton VPN all the way to Proton Mail, with 500 gigabytes of storage, which is a massive upgrade from their old plans that capped out at only five gigabytes. So that's huge. This also pretty much extends over the same way for business plans for any of you that have team or business accounts. If you're already paying for a plan in the Proton ecosystem, Proton has automatically transitioned you over to the closest new plan. So paying customers already receive all of these new perks and the new plans without having to do anything. So if you're already a paying customer, go check out your settings to see if you qualified for the 500 gigabytes. And lastly, I did want to outline what hasn't changed. Really, nothing behind the scenes internally seems to have changed. It's still the same service, same privacy and security practices, same limitations on the privacy and security front, just to mention that. And it seems like it's mostly cosmetic stuff for the most part outside of that massive storage upgrade and the plan differences. These are a lot of big things for probably Proton's largest 
single revamp they've ever done, especially in one go, because normally they just release one app over here that's a little bit better, and then they exclude the other app for another three years without doing anything to it, but they actually are pretty much synchronizing everything on the same day, more or less. Here are my thoughts on everything that I covered. Proton.me, phenomenal. Uh, when I go to a bank or I have to give my email to someone in person, when I would say at protonmail.com, I have to spell it out for them. Proton mail, one word, space, hyphen. So it's not a super familiar name for people. It's not a huge deal, but I think proton.me is so much more simple for people to understand and grasp. So just saying proton.me, super simple. As for the actual URL, I had to uninstall like my extension progressive web app that I use for Proton stuff that I use, and I had to reinstall them with the proton.me domain. So it wasn't a big deal transition. And once it was done, it doesn't feel any different. As for the new logos, oh, this is the hot take. You can totally hate them. I actually like them a lot. I think that it's much more modern. I like how they're all very similar now because back with their old logos, like the Proton VPN looks nothing like the other three. Um, and the other three even kind of have a similar theme, but they have minor differences that make you even ask if it's the same ecosystem. My biggest complaint with the thumbnails though, and actually my editor said this too, it's just very white, you know? Like, I wish it was more purple. Uh, it feels like when I'm in a dark mode for something, it's like that logo is just in your face. Something else, the progressive web app icon is like horrid. So that's just on the progressive web app side of things. If you add it as an extension, that is pretty horrid, but the logos look fine everywhere else, but that specific logo does not look good. And that's actually a pretty common problem with a lot of services I use. So I'm not gonna be too mad about that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new logos. Personally, I think they're nice. As for the branding update, I kind of already talked about this in the changes section. It was the one thing I kind of inserted my thoughts on a little bit. I think it's very important for Proton to differentiate things a little bit better. I think for them internally and how they view their entire ecosystem, grouping everything up as just Proton is going to help them visualize their suite better and the development of things. So. It's a very subconscious thing. We even deal with this on the Techler side of things and how we have to brand certain things. But the way that you brand something makes you look at the entire product and suite and everything you're building a little bit differently. And I know that developers and people who manage teams who are hearing this probably know what I'm talking about. It's a very hard thing to describe. So I think it is important for the end user indirectly, but you as an end user, I mean, you don't care. They're probably just gonna add a space to all their services and that's all you're gonna ever see. But I do think it matters at the end of the day for that them as a company. As for the desktop UI, um, very minor changes. The The thing that really is upsetting is Proton Mail already has a pretty darn modern interface, especially compared to all of the other private email providers. And they made updates to that one the most when it was already really good. And then I'm looking at Proton Drive and it's still the most bare bones frankly, super incomplete service they offer. So it would have been cool to see them um, bring Proton Drive a little more up to speed. Um, however, the Proton VPN UI looks absolutely phenomenal. And also the big elephant in the room, um, I know some people have had access to the new Proton Mail application. Um, I haven't, I still haven't received the update on Android. I'm in the public release channel. I refuse to use beta versions for things that I pay for. That's just something I stand by. If I'm paying for a service, I want it to work and I'm not here to be a beta tester. So I've been waiting for the actual public release ProtonMail revamp for a long time now, and I still don't have it, but it looks great and I can't wait to get it once I, once I receive it. Um, I've been using Proton Calendar as well recently on my phone, and I've just loved the Proton Calendar UI. So having something just like Proton Calendar on all of their other clients is going to be fantastic. I also want to see a Proton Drive app. So when's that coming? Proton Drive is probably their most neglected service lately. So I really want to see that um, get back up to speed, which I really hope to change because now you actually have like 500 gigabytes of storage to work with. So I really hope that they actually like take advantage of that because I don't want to just have the option to upload 500 gigabytes to this unusable client. As for the plans, so this is cool because I have a personal paid Proton account as well as the business account that we use internally for all our Techlore stuff for our team. The business side of things is crazy cool. So we have four team members and each team member got access to 500 gigabytes of storage and it's pooled together for the organization. So for the company side of things, we now have two terabytes of drive storage. But again, it's not usable for much because there's no desktop syncing clients, so you can't use it like many of the other cloud storage providers do. 
Um, and also it's just a very bare bones experience that's not gonna work for our workflow yet. So the storage for me is just a massive improvement. And it's also really cool to see the VPN improvements too, because beforehand, I think we had two free connections to Proton Plus, but now each user gets 10 connections, which is incredible. And this also carries over pretty similarly over to the personal plans, which is what many of you are gonna be using, which is you now get access to 500 gigabytes as a paid user, which is crazy. And you also get access to, I think, Proton VPN pretty much for free. So um, it's cool because that can eliminate one extra subscription. Now, with that all said, I think it's interesting to comment. This is the last thing I'm gonna comment on here. People who love Proton and love the ecosystem are going to love this entire direction they're going. People who don't want to overly rely and trust on a single entity for things, you're going to not like this. And that's totally fine. You're totally valid for wanting to separate different aspects of your life with different services. So yeah, that's really personal preference. Um, I think it's worth outlining, though, that all of these decisions and the decisions they're about to make going forward are only going to push further and further into this suite. So if you're someone who already doesn't like the suite environment, know that it's only probably going to get worse. And you might want to switch to something else if that's a big concern for you. Or, I mean, I guess you can just avoid all the stuff they offer, but then you might be paying, you know, 10 bucks a month for the unlimited account just to access ProtonMail. And you're going to be paying $5 a month for a VPN. And you're going to be paying $5 a month for cloud storage. And then maybe you have some free calendar that you use. So I don't know. I, I would say unless you love ProtonMail for whatever reason, you might as well start switching away if you don't love the suite. And if you love the suite, then just start going all in. So yeah, those were the updates. Those are my thoughts on the updates. And I do want to mention there is going to be a Proton affiliate link down in the description if you do like the Proton suite and you want to get it, but it's totally optional. I'm going to leave a regular link down there too. So there's no pressure for you to click the affiliate one. It's really just a support method if you want to click it and support us while you go and buy the service. Seriously, no pressure. We're not here to tell you to go get Proton. It's just something that's opt-in for you to help us out with. And finally, if you don't like Proton and you don't like the direction they're going, you're so valid. And we actually have a video that I'm gonna leave right here on the screen that goes into other email providers to help you ditch Gmail. So go ahead and check out that video to see other alternatives to Gmail to help you pick the email provider that you like most. We'll see you in that video and I'll see you next time on TechLore.